Forget sausages, pretzels, and beer. What are with these other foods in Germany? Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie, and along with my wife, Aubrey, we are two Americans currently living in Germany and sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. If you are seeing this video, that means that we have actually had our baby and are actually taking a little bit of leave. That's right, we are now officially passport three, I guess. And as you are watching this video, we are probably changing diapers and trying to find time to sleep or whatever else parents do. I don't actually know yet because I'm filming this in the future and I'm not a dad yet, so I don't know what they do. But while we take a little bit of leave, I couldn't go completely without uploading something, so I have prepared a few videos on various themes in which I have taken some of our favorite topics from past videos and compiled them into one video on a specific theme, and I think there will be quite a few of these that you all never have actually seen. I will leave a link to the original videos of each part for you to check out if you would like, but with all that being said, I hope you enjoy this video on our most interesting food culture shocks in Germany. We are originally from a state in the southern U.S. called Oklahoma and now live in the southwestern German state of Rheinland-Pfalz. Both of these places have their own unique subcultures that may not be representative of the two countries as a whole. Therefore, let me know your individual experiences with these things in the comments below and where you are from. And let's just remember, just because one place does something one way and another place does it another way doesn't always mean there are rights and wrongs, maybe just simply different ways of doing things. Come springtime in Germany, you will start to feel a certain buzz in the air and electricity and suddenly all the Germans that sometimes had the reputation for being cold and grumbly will walk around with smiles on their faces and a little pep in their step as they rush around to restaurants and grocery stores to get their fill of asparagus. Well, not what Americans would call asparagus. If an American goes to a German restaurant in May, sees spargel on the menu, but they don't know what it is and they translate it, the translation would just come out to asparagus. This probably wouldn't feel so special to them as they most likely were forced to eat these by their mother growing up or because it is a super common side dish in the US. However, as soon as it comes out and the American sees what it is they have ordered, they would be shocked. That is because of a silly little nuance with the words used to describe these foods. To an American, simply asparagus is going to refer to the long skinny green variety, but to a German, the translation for asparagus will refer to long thick white vegetables. In both countries, the opposite has to be specifically referred to as the exception to ensure that everybody is on the same page as to what is being talked about. This means in Germany, what is asparagus in the US is green asparagus in Germany, and what is simply asparagus in Germany would be referred to as white asparagus in the US. If you're American and grew up on green asparagus and don't like it, I would still highly encourage you to give white asparagus a go if you get the chance. White asparagus soup or just white asparagus with a hollandaise sauce in the spring is hard to beat. <laughs> We are going to stick to the food topic for just a moment longer because there is one German cultural tradition that we put up very little fight in adopting and did so basically immediately after moving here. This is also something we already know we will undoubtedly keep for the rest of our lives, and that is Kaffee und Kuchen. Coffee and Kuchen literally is translated as coffee and cake and is the German version of English afternoon tea or Swedish fika. It is a midday pause to meet with friends or family, have coffee, cake, and a nice long chat. According to Condé Nast Traveler, in Germany, the habit of meeting over coffee and something sweet was first established in the late 17th century. Once coffee became more accessible beyond the country's elite, in the 19th century, coffee and Kuchen became a fixture for those seeking a little break from the everyday grind. Café und Küchen normally takes place between 3 to 4-ish or 3 to 5-ish and on any day of the week. But we do seem to see more people on the weekends filling cafes having coffee and cake while sitting for hours and hours just enjoying life and catching up. Germany's cafes are filled with spectacular assortments of cakes ranging from strudels to black forest cake, cheesecakes, Baumkuchen, Bienenstich, Frankfurter Kranz, and so much more. Although not great for our waistlines, we love the culturally devoted time to sit down and enjoy food and friends. It also is one of the few times where you would arrive to something punctually 
like the Germans love, but then just completely forget about the time as you relax. This is one thing we have particularly missed since everything has been closed down, but we also regularly incorporate it into our personal home now in lieu of a cafe. As avid coffee and cake connoisseurs ourselves, we want to know from you what is the best cake that we need to try. Real quick, I wanted to come back to say more than ever, it would mean a lot if you supported our channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. Also, a huge, huge shout out to our patrons over on Patreon for supporting us in the way that they do. Again, in particular, it means a lot as we are making this huge family transition right now. Now, back to the video. We hope you aren't hungry because we're heading into a couple of food items, starting with the almighty Quark. Quark is a dairy product made from fermenting soured milk and technically is a cheese. It is often compared to cottage cheese or drained Greek yogurt and is eaten in many various ways, like spread on bread with jam for breakfast, over a baked potato, or can even be baked into a cheesecake. It is supposed to be a healthier alternative to Greek yogurt or sour cream, and it is very high in protein. And it is an essential staple to the German diet. Along with Bratwurst, and beer, when people think of German cuisine, they should also think of Quark. However, the only time that I can think of that we've actually tried it is when we visit the city of Mainz. In Mainz, they have a specialty known as Spundekäse. Spundekäse is kind of a spicy and garlicky cheese bread or dip that is traditionally served with crackers or small hard pretzels and wine. There are varying recipes, but the most important ingredient in all of them is quark. Honestly, quark is a pretty hard food to describe to Americans because there isn't really a substitute for it in the US. Drained Greek yogurt can somewhat come close to it, but really quark is just quark. And when in Germany, you have to do as the Germans do and try it. For our German viewers, what is your favorite way to eat quark? When it comes to food in Germany, man, do we love some German food. In particular, sure, the schnitzels and the sausages are amazing, but where are my fellow Pelzish people at? A Saumagen? Come on! That is something that I didn't know existed before moving here that now I cannot get enough of. But this isn't the point of this section of the video, but what I wanted to talk about is food related, and that is how Germans drown their salads in salad dressing. Now again, I don't know if this is like a thing that Germans are kind of known for, or if it is just based on the US's standards of leafy greens to dressing ratio that we are used to, but we have never not had a salad in Germany in the years and years of living and traveling here that aren't just swimming in dressing. I will say that even with this tendency, we still for the most part have always enjoyed the salads that we receive in restaurants in Germany, but for us, it has become this inside joke that no matter what part of the country we are in, after eating the vegetable parts, we are left with pools of dressing on our plate, unlike an American plate, which would be dry for the most part. So I would be interested in knowing from you guys, is this the thing that Germans are known for, or at least something other Americans in Germany have noticed, or what about Germans. Let's keep in mind that this is somewhat relative, so if you grew up in Germany and are used to it, maybe it won't seem like a lot of dressing to you, but rather what it's just supposed to be like. But if you travel to the US, maybe did you notice that it seems like Americans are skimping on their dressing from what you are used to? Okay, this next food item is one that I want to know what all of your experiences are with this food because it kind of shocked us when we first moved to Germany and saw it. After moving here, we found out the city closest to us has a farmer's market two mornings a week. At this market, there's always one surprising stand that we haven't braved trying yet because they specialize in serving something that we had never seen served in the US and that is horse meat. This special stain is specifically a horse butcher and they serve up horse sausages, horse meatballs, and horse meat you can take home and grill up, I guess. Beyond just the farmer's markets, the local horse butcher also regularly sets up a stall at the city soccer stadium on game days and cooking up horse at city festivals. They of course also have their own brick and mortar store in the city where you can go and grab some horse meat on your way home from work for dinner. As this really is not a meat you find in the US to eat, this took us by surprise to find out Germans eat horse. 
So what's the deal with horse meat in the US and in Germany? Well, there are literally thousands of years of history surrounding the consumption or non-consumption of horse meat. But to quickly sum it up into some of the most influential parts, the book of Leviticus in the Bible outlaws Jews from eating horse. And in 732, Pope Gregory III declared Christians should stop eating horse meat because it was an impure and detestable pagan meat. However, as the Atlantic says, a combination of enlightenment rationalism, the Napoleonic Wars, and a rising population of urban working horses led European nations to experiment with horse meat in the 19th century. For example, in Germany, some regions developed traditional dishes that center around horse meat like in the Rhineland, where Sauerbraten is traditionally made from horse meat. There is also Swabian Federhorsbraten, Bavarian horse sausages, and more. But even with this new enlightenment of eating horse in Europe, it remain taboo in the new world. In the US, there was an abundance of meats other than horse that made eating horse unnecessary. And after hearing what led to horse meat being eaten in Europe, it began to be believed that eating horse was just for poverty, war, social breakdown, and revolution. However, horse meat consumption in the US actually rose and fell throughout history. And during war times or hard times, eating horse meat wasn't totally uncommon, but for the most part remained fairly taboo. The regulations surrounding the legality of butchering or consuming horse meat in the US has also fluctuated through the years. Until 2007, only three horse slaughterhouses still existed in the US, although they were specifically for exporting to markets outside of the US. Today, the legality of consuming horse meat varies from state to state, technically speaking. But for example, Wikipedia has a story where in May of 2017, horse tartare was served at a restaurant in Pennsylvania where it technically is legal, but the USDA came in for an inspection and issued warnings to not serve horse meat again. Now, before you click off this video thinking that German families are regularly eating horse meat, I want to clarify that although you will find specifically horse butchers in Germany, and technically any butcher is allowed to butcher horse today, it isn't truly all that common. For example, if you walk around a German city, you will find butchers on butchers on butchers, but you may have to dig hard just to find a butcher that butches horses, and you won't find horse meat in regular grocery stores. I will also say that our anecdotal story of the prevalence of our local horse butcher probably isn't the norm across Germany. In fact, if we look at the trends of the production of horse meat for consumption in Germany, we can see it has been dramatically decreasing through recent years. So I want to ask you though, have you ever eaten horse meat or would you ever do it if you came across it? A classic German Sunday afternoon may also take you to an ice cream shop where you will get a nice scoop of ice cream. This honestly isn't any different in the US where of course one of the most popular ways to cool off is with an ice cream. And in fact, Germans and Americans both consume about the same amount of ice cream per year, around six kilograms. But you will find big differences between ice cream in the US and in Germany. German ice cream primarily is actually gelato, which contains less fat, is much less dense, is much softer, serve slightly warmer, and the scoops are generally much smaller than American scoops. You can also enjoy unique flavors over here in Europe that you won't typically find in the US. Two examples would be Stracciacella, which is vanilla with chocolate shavings, my favorite, Waldmeister, which is extremely unique to Germany and would be translated to sweet woodruff in English, but that won't help describe what it tastes like, of course, because that isn't really a flavor used in America. Which is my favorite. Yes. There are also unique German ice cream specialties like spaghetti ice, which is a vanilla ice cream treat made to look like a plate of spaghetti with whipped cream, vanilla ice cream squeezed through a spätzle press to look like noodles, topped with strawberry sauce to look like tomato sauce, and white chocolate shavings to look like Parmesan cheese. To see who made it this far into the video, the random question of the week is... Summer, fall, winter, or spring? What is your favorite season? Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and we will see you in our next video. Baby, and they're actually taking a little bit particular, it means a lot as we are making these again, and again, in particular, it means a lot right now as we are making this huge family tradition. I'm sorry, future Donnie, this is supposed to be easy and I'm making it difficult by messing up so much.